Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, colleagues. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth uh, for your work in protecting and preserving historic Fort Monroe there in Hampton, Virginia. That is, I think, a great example of a collaborative approach where folks get together, uh, they see a need, and that national monument designation now that will be put in place will allow us to preserve uh, a very significant historic landmark there. And it also shows how we can come together and, and do what's best for our natural resources. And I'm, I'm sure you agree that this is really a result of broad citizen support and also a bipartisan approach from both federal, state, and local officials. So it's a, it's a great opportunity there. And as was highlighted, I think it's going to create jobs for the region. And really, it's a win-win situation. If you look at that as an example, I think it sets the tone for what we can do with offshore gas and oil development. If you look there in Virginia, you see the same situation. You see broad citizen support. You see bipartisan support for development of oil and gas in the offshore region there off of Virginia. Uh, we think that's extraordinarily important as we go forward. And it was disappointing when the announcement came out on the 2012-2017 uh, Outer Continental Shelf Oil and Gas Leasing Program that uh, Lease 220 in Virginia was not included as part of that. And as you know, by excluding that, that takes away, I think, an opportunity for us to responsibly develop uh, our fossil fuels offshore there. And we all know that it has a significant economic impact, upwards of $20 uh, billion annually, and creates a number of significant jobs, great infrastructure there in order to be able to support that. And I want to bring to your attention a letter from myself and, and other colleagues from the Virginia Congressional Delegation to ask you to reconsider that uh, determination made on Lease 220. And uh, Mr. Chairman, without um, uh, um, objection, I'd like that to be entered in the record. Without objection, it will be part of the record. I want to ask this. As you look as across the board with that broad bipartisan support, you look the governor of Virginia, the Virginia legislature, local officials, state officials have all said, let's go forward with uh, the least 220. Uh, and we've seen citizens in the area, too. Uh, with that widespread support, I'm wondering why the department determined not to go forward with this in the 2012-2017 plan. And I want to get some of your reasons behind that. Also look, too, and some of the other reasons given in the report as to why some of the other areas were opened up, such as in the Pacific. And it talked about the broad support there with local and state governments as a reason that those areas were going to be opened up. And I'm wondering, is the broad support there in Virginia uh, less uh, of a factor in making a determination than broad support elsewhere when these determinations remain. I'd like, like to get your perspective on that. Thank you uh, very much, Congressman Whitman. And let me uh, just say uh, that I appreciate the work that you do on the Migratory Bird Conservation Commission. You uh, have been a leader in conservation with uh, Congressman Dingell and with uh, Senator Cochran, as well as with Senator Pryor. And uh, I appreciate the time that you spend advancing the conservation agenda for uh, hunters and anglers in, in the United States of America. With respect to lease sale 220 in Virginia, uh, let me say that since uh, two years ago, uh, we have developed additional information from the Department of Defense that shows that there are significant conflicts uh, between oil and gas development and the military needs within the triangle that was included in the lease sale 220. And so our view is that we need to continue to develop additional information to see if we can deconflict the important mission of supporting the defense and uh, military needs of our country, which is also so important not only to the country but to Virginia, and at the same time look at developing additional information on the Atlantic with respect to its oil and gas potential. But it's really, at this point in time, uh, in large part, the conflict issues that were raised by the Department of Defense with respect to lease sale 220. Well, let me ask this then. As the discussion takes place, not only about uh, offshore gas and oil development, but also about wind development offshore, uh, the discussions have taken place on both, about uh, potential interference there on both. It seems that there is an accelerated discussion on the wind side, but not the same effort there on the oil and gas development side. I would say that both of them, obviously, are issues that we need to address uh, with the Navy and other branches but that they ought to both be pursued at the same time. I think both of the conflicts are very, very similar. And to me, that they ought to be, be able to be uh, taken up and, and those issues taken care of in a, in a fairly timely manner. 
And it seems like to me to, to spread this out over another five years uh, is, well, less than what we're capable of. We're capable of sitting down and getting those things done. And I've spoken with the leadership in the Navy who have said that, that they want to pursue aggressively those discussions to make sure we get to a point to make sure that we develop all of the potential in that outer continental shelf. Time of the, uh, real briefly, Mr. Secretary, if you want to respond to that. You know, I, I don't uh, have a disagreement with respect to making sure that we are being, as Bob Abbey often says, smart from the start, including in the outer continental shelf. And so our work with the Department of Defense and the Navy will give us significant additional information with respect to not only lease sale 220, but also the seismic work that we uh, are moving forward with will give us additional information on the Atlantic.